Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today, we're going to be taking a quick look at least at the Asus Sabertooth 990FX. But it's for the 990FX. That means it's a new Asus AM3 Plus board. Ah. Oh. So yes, you did hear correctly. Asus have a new AM3 Plus board. I have to admit, when I first saw that they were going to be releasing a new AMD motherboard, I thought we were going to be seeing some new Zen stuff. I'm gonna to talk to you about my thoughts about what they're doing with this and why we're kind of seeing it now kind of thing in the conclusion. But we're just gonna have a skim around the board. I'll explain why we're not doing our complete testing and that's because I did ask AMD for the top end um, eight core just for a loan so that I could really put this through its paces. I've only got some of the uh, lower end eight cores that are the low power models that are not really going to stress this, you know, like the, the power phases out because there are 10 power phases just for the CPU. It's built basically to be able to cope with the absolute top end like 9590. Um, and they, they just don't have any. And if I try and use my lower end ones, I've not really got anything to compare it to. So it all gets a little bit messy. So we've decided just to do a skim over. I may do some overclocking with some of the lower end ones at a later date, but we'll just see. But for now, we're just gonna look at this as being like an extended news piece, because as I've said, it's got 10 power phases down the side. So that's going to mean uh, we do know with, with like the 9590 and some of the 8 cores they can require a lot of very clean power, so plenty of power faces to be able to feed them so that they can get enough juice for their overclocks. So that's all taken care of. If you're going to be feeding lots of juice in and you're looking for a big overclock then you're going to need to start thinking about cooling. And up on the top here um, uh, we have normal water pump, then we have auxiliary water, sorry, normal CPU, auxiliary CPU, and then we have a water pump header, so a dedicated water pump header. Really, what they've done with this is they've kind of, uh, they've brought lots of new technologies in, so that's why we're seeing an AMD board with a water pump header on it. Then we've got an M.2 slot down the bottom. This is pretty, um, uh, you know, relatively new thing to see on a uh, new AMD Asus motherboard. We have also got two USB 3 um, on boards, USB 2s at the bottom on board. It's all kind of got, <coughs> excuse me, it's about like the, the, the tough component tree that they've used meant to be longevity and stuff like that. So it's built to be abused, which is another reason why we've got the, around the main um, uh, PCI Express slot, there's um, steel shielding around it to help keep it nice and rigid. To bring it into the uh, current branding and the current design, and you can see that we've got LEDs beneath the, the end of the PCI Express, which brings it in line with the other Asus boards on the market at the moment. When we come around the back, there's loads of connectivity around the back. I'll bring you in for a better look. Loads of connectivity around the back. So at the top, we've got four normal USB twos. Then we have four USB threes. Then we've got um, USB 3.1s. You've got three of those in total. You've got uh, the three A's and then you've got one C type. And then you've got uh, the LAN guard on the gigabit LAN here and your digital audio. And there is a separate um, uh, audio section down the side to be able to do that. And if we look on, on the box, it's got thermal radar, the tough LAN guard, Asus safe slot, it's Aura as well. So the only thing I was disappointed not to find, considering it uh, does have Asus Aura capabilities down here, is there's no external connector anywhere down the bottom that we've got used to on some of the other newer boards. So there's sadly no way for you to be able to connect external RGB strips um, or any other um, uh, Asus Aura supported products there's no way for you to be able to hook it up. I don't know whether there's some other cables that you know they can possibly give you to be able to do it, but I mean, I, I, I keep looking because in all honesty, I, um, I can't believe it's not on here. So 
While we're down here, other thing that we've got, we've got onboard power uh, switch down here. This is a BIOS flashback uh, switch that you've got here as well. Five total onboard SATA connections down the back. Uh, thankfully, no sign of any SATA Express, but sadly, also no sign of a U.2 connector. So that's your quick skim around the board. As you can see, essentially what it is, is it's an AMD motherboard um, with the tough kind of Asus Sabertooth theming, but then they've brought in new technologies like a, a USB 3.1, and you've got both the A and the C on there. You finally got an M.2 compatibility as well. I'm pretty sure the U.2 has got to be some weird Intel connector mumbo jumbo, or maybe they just thought that it was going to add too much to the cost on, because it does come in at 180 pounds. But with the, um, the amount of power phases that you've got for the CPU there, it does mean that if you've got one of the high-end AMD CPUs, which to get the best from them, they do need a lot of power and clean power as well. Because you need to kind of over-spec the power delivery so that it's got half a chance of being able to have a decent lifespan. So you've got all that. You've got another, uh, you've got a water pump header on there as well, which is a really nice thing for those of you out there that have got... Um, the AIOs with the four pin PWMs and stuff like that on it. And, but I know there are gonna be people going on about AMD and what's the point. Well, you need to remember that there are a lot of people out there that are AMD. So what this does is if your board's playing up or you've had a failure or you've just got that itch, then you have the possibility to be able to take current CPU and set up, change the board and come on to something newer. Maybe you do want to get an M.2 drive and at the moment you feel a little bit held back. Now, I, we can't look at a product like this without talking about, speculating about, even mentioning Zen. But we don't know 100% when Zen is. It's been, been teased all year, uh, and I'll honestly say that as far as I'm aware, I don't think I'm going to be getting any Zen spec motherboards this side of Christmas. I've not got any concrete dates, but for there not to be some rumblings around there, um, I don't know anything yet. I'm kind of listening to the jungle drum. Boom, 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 boom. I'm foreseeing by looking into my crystal ball and not having any um, specific information given to me, I am foreseeing that we may be uh, seeing something at the begin beginning of next year. Some big shows next year, there's another couple of big launches next year, and I think it's probably all going to rumble around the same time and make my life a living nightmare because of everything kind of coming at once. But for the time being, um, people might w want or need a motherboard for the time being. Just fancy an upgrade. You know, there are many different reasons. All of you Intel fanboys out there, I know you're gonna have some bad stuff to say, but you know, there's a little pat on the head. Just sit down and let the AMD enthusiasts have a little bit of fun, knowing that there's a new product out, if not just for a little while. And to be honest with you, I live in hope that all you Intel fanboys um, are gonna get a big slap of wet fish around the face next year, or at least that's what I pray. I do pray that Zen's gonna be good. And it's totally off topic for this, but I feel it needs to be said. But that's an entire video, different video in itself. But for now, anyway, Asus Sabertooth, 990FX, uh, loads of extra um, technological kind of connectivity, mum, you know, things that we can put on there, plenty of good clean power, and some relatively decent looks as well. I know some people aren't going to be a fan of the brown, um, but, you know, that's the, the line on this. I still think that you could make a, a good looking rig with this as well. And the fact that we do have that water pump header means if you are one of the people with a 9590 and you've got an AIO, um, then you can get that on there and you've got a much better chance of being able to keep it cool and quiet. So there's that. Let me know what you think. Would you like me to get a CPU in it and give it some overclocking like whoomph? Um, because it is possible, it's just uh, with the review or the news or overview that we've done today, I didn't really have anything to compare it to. So it's no point me doing a full review because I couldn't really compare it to something that we would have done so long ago with Windows 7 on an entirely different system and different hard drives. And, you know, it, it, it's just an absolute minefield of trying to get the results to tally up. But anyway, let me know what you think. I tried to keep it quick. I think I failed. So I'm going to go.